Hey you folks, how's it going? Welcome to another packing video. It's great to have you along. Today we're doing things just a little bit differently in that we're talking about two walks at the same time. We've got the West Highland Way and the Great Glen Way and that's what I'm going to be heading out to walk tomorrow. I leave at 4am. I have to catch a flight to Scotland, then I have to catch a bus into the city and then a train to the start and then we'll walk 10 miles. So tomorrow's going to be kind of a long day for me but that's all right. This is what this is all about. So the West Highland Way then, let's start with that trail. 76 miles. It runs from Mulgai just outside of Glasgow right through the West Highlands up to Fort William in the West Highlands. Uh, so I'll stay there for two days. Hopefully we'll get a break in the weather and I can climb Ben Nevis, which is the highest mountain in the UK. And then from Fort William, it's the start of the Great Glen Way. So I'll follow that one for about 78 miles, I believe it is, uh, up to Inverness, where I'll fly back to Bristol and be reunited with my friends and my family and my dogs, of course. They're the, the best bit, sorry guys, but let's be real. We all know it's true. <laughs> so that's my plan. I've got, uh, I'll be away for 13 days in total with all of this. So it's taking me six days to walk the West Highland Way and four for the Great Glen Way. Got some big mileages ahead of me. And um, if I'm honest, my pack weight's considerably heavier than perhaps I'd like it to be. At the moment, it's about 15 and a half kilograms without water. <laughs> um, so I'll be carrying two liters of water. And uh, if, if I just want to emphasize, as a filmmaker, seven kilograms of this is camera gear. So that's what most folks would do without. I'm not a lightweight backpacker. I just can't be with how I function, how I work. Um, but everything in my pack has been consciously uh, thought over as to why I'm carrying it. Do I need it? Yes, it goes in the bag. No not worth bringing it so that's what we'll do is we'll just look at everything i've got in here we'll unpack it have a discussion around each item and then we'll put everything back in so without further ado let's get started so this is my osprey exos backpack if you've watched any of my other videos you know that i use this over and over and over again this is a 48 liter pack um just pretty much always does me for anything up to kind of two weeks in terms of distance so it's great uh, what i've got on the bottom here is my hilleberg acto tent this is a kind of five season mountain tent. It's a pretty awesome tunnel design, but I am, if I'm gonna let you into a little secret here, looking at potentially upgrading my one person sort of summer sleeping system, uh, just cause I really struggle with the condensation with this tent. It's just wet, even if it doesn't rain or drizzle and it's so frustrating. Um, so that's my Hilleberg Acto, which I love. You know, we've done some serious journeys together, you know? Uh, so that's that one on the bottom. We don't need to look at that. If you want a separate review for pretty much anything in my, my kit, then have a look at the description below and it'll be linked up there. So we'll start with the top pocket then. What I've got in here is, oh, first and foremost, I have a smidge head net. Do you want to just, should we just have a little bit of fun here for a minute? I've not used one of these and I can't even see out of it and I'm not even sure I'm going to use it, but um, hats off. Look, clearly I like you guys. Ta-da! <laughs> So whether or not I walk in this, whether or not I need it, whether or not I can just let go of my ego and wear it for long enough, I don't know. But um, that's a smidge head net because <laughs> one of the biggest things I've had to think about uh, with this trip to Scotland is the fact that I'm going in peak season for, for midges and for mosquitoes and they just seriously love my blood. You know, I could just, yeah, I just get eaten alive to be honest. So um, I'm taking that as a precaution. You'll see some other things as well that I've got in here. So that's the first thing that has come out, which is my smidge head net. We'll pop that one there. Up next, this is my kind of accessible dry bag. Within this one, I've got a lot of essentials. Um, for example, then I've got my wallet, which has some cash in it. It's got cards, train tickets, all of that sort of stuff. This is currently packed, uh, ready to go to the airport. <laughs> so that's my wallet. I've got in here a New Testament that I like to read. It's just a bit different from reading trail stuff all the time. And then basically some electrics that are very helpful to have handy if at every point I find a socket. So I've got a, a dual USB charger, which can charge my phone and my uh, portable power pack. And then I've got two leads that I can charge both at the same time. So I've really tried to think that through. This one's slightly longer. I think it's about a meter and a half in length because quite often what you find in these kind of bunkhouse places or I don't know, costas if you happen to find one, I think there's one at Fort William, then uh, you know, you're charging your phone but you're often quite far away from the socket. There is a train coming. You're often quite far away from the socket so it's a little bit challenging to, to stick with your phone so you want a nice long lead. That's the purpose of that. Wave to the train. There we go. <laughs> so that's that bag there. That's why I've got all of that stuff. This one here, this is literally a half full, so it's about 25 millilitres of hand gel. 
very helpful. I've got some loose cereal bars in the top here. Uh, so we've got Chia Charge bars. I have lots of those in my bag this time. They're my main sponsors for this trip. Uh, really great health sort of food bars that are also fantastic fuel. They're really quite light actually for the energy that they provide. And if I'm honest, like these are really addictive. <laughs> the peanut butter one, oh my word, that is to die for. So just got a couple of those in the top there. And then this here, I've got some sun cream wishful thinking, some tissues, I've got some insect bite stuff and I've got some uh, Nurofen joint cream because of my trap injury, which basically I've got a torn muscle which makes carrying any weight pretty much agonizing pain. So go me, <laughs> uh, another cereal bar thing. And I've got some Kendall mint cake. That's kind of my emergency fuel if I just find my blood sugar levels are dropping. And then also in the top, I've just got a little green tin of aloe vera, kindly donated by my friend. So. Um, that's very helpful, especially if you're kind of snotting everywhere and you just need to keep things nice and moist. Good word. All right, so let's have a look at the front pocket then. What we've got in here straight away is a bag. That's great, isn't it? In here, I've got flip-flops. And check this out, they're not my usual ones. These are light. Now, pretty much <laughs> the only time you kind of weigh on a scale different flip-flops is when you backpack, right? You want to watch every gram. So I was there weighing my current flip-flops, the ones I normally use, which are Grimby's or something like that, fabric. Uh, when they're dry, they weigh just shy of, I think it was 500 grams. These guys weigh 120 grams. So I was like, all right, you know, unfortunately I'm gonna have to embrace the plastic and uh, use these. So I've got these this time. Nice flip-flops are there for around camp and I just keep them in a bag because obviously they get wet when I wear them, um, I say obviously the forecast for this trip is very wet. I'm gonna get wet, that's just just wet. That's all I need to say. Um, now then, what we've got here is a new piece of kit and I've left the tag on so I can tell you a little bit about it. I've ordered this specifically, nice blue, it's a little bit big. It's a Crag Hoppers no Nozzy Life, I think they call it, jacket. And basically, um, it's just designed and it's got some kind of built-in technology to repel insects. I've done a lot of research into it so it's kind of a little bit more complicated than that. But um, I'm gonna be wearing this where I need to just to keep those bugs away. So that's a jacket that will be accessible. Um, I have a spare plastic bag. In here, I've got my usual 66 degree North Iceland hat, which is wonderful. That's my hat. I've got some fingerless gloves, because they're always great. I don't always just use those as gloves either. Sometimes I wear them underneath my shoulders just to protect um, my skin there, if I, especially if I'm just wearing a t-shirt from the friction. Some, I often get these weird lumps here and it just gets really sore, so sometimes just putting gloves underneath helps with that. And then I have a buff, and the only other thing I've got in here is some seal skin gloves, which actually I'm gonna take out, see if I can replace those with some lighter fabric gloves. I think they're just worth having because the, you know, it's gonna be wet, it's gonna be cold, and uh, I just wanna be on the safe side with that. So that's my kind of insulation for my extremities. And then another plastic bag, can't have enough of them. This is my waterproof cover for my rucksack that just stays attached to it, which is good. I've got a map case, hopefully that will come in handy. In here then, this is my notes, I've got my passport, I've got my schedule, I've got like print off of maps and things uh, for when I'm wandering around Glasgow and Fort William. I've got, yeah, a big notepad. I write a lot when I'm away, so I'm gonna write in there. So that's kind of all kept nice and together. And the last thing I've got is this empty dry bag, which I put the microphone, which is my video mic pro that I'm filming on now. I put that in here just to keep that nice and protected. So that's everything in the top and the front pocket. You can see this is a nice stretchy mesh pocket. Very helpful for me <laughs> to ram stuff in there. And then usually the tripod that I'm filming on right now, which is kind of a lightweight, not really, uh, tripod that sits on the front when I'm walking. So I can't get that off unless I stop and take my pack off but it's just the best place for me to carry that at the moment. On the side, I just have a flask, which is half full for some apparent reason. And then what sits, or it's the, the flask sits in this mug, which is a titanium mug. It weighs apparently, I think, what, like 100 grams, so it's nothing. It just sits in there like that, which is really great. Uh, so that works really well for me, nice system. And then on the side I've also got, I would not normally keep this here, it's just so I can show you. Except it's tangled up. <laughs> Let's get that out, there we go. 
So I've got my GoPro Hero 3 Plus, pretty old school. Keeps producing corrupt files, but that's what I shoot on at the moment. I'm still struggling to get a GoPro Hero 5 or 6 that works for me, as in literally works. They just seem to keep dying. So still shooting with this old fella. And then I've got a selfie stick, which I don't use, but I'm thinking I might try and use just to get those bigger shots of the mountains and things that we're going to be seeing when we're in the West Highlands. There's going to be some seriously spectacular scenery and I just want to maximise how much I can share with you with regards to the footage that I'm taking. Then on the other side, what I've got here, as I say, this is packed for the airport. Now I have this whopping great bag sack thing. Now they are, I'm not going to unroll it, but basically this will fit this rucksack in, so when I'm flying, it just keeps everything together. I can keep my tripod in there. Um, and it is obviously an extra weight that I don't have to lug across Scotland, uh, but it's really helpful. It means that I don't need to worry about wrapping this in that uh, plastic stuff that just gets thrown away. I just hate that stuff, it's terrible. Um, it's like clean film, but you put it around your kit when you're sending it off. And this is just such a reusable, much more environmentally sensitive uh, product that I can reuse so I've got that one there and then I've also got just another bottle this is a weird square one perfect so I've got that one as well and that's the the kind of extremities of the pack then let's have a look on the inside so underneath this lid we've got a mesh pocket here and what I keep in here then I have got my head torch which is the Petzl Actic head torch perfect for me nice and light really good i think it's like 300 lumens worth of light so it's proper quality stuff uh, and then i've got some spare batteries apparently i've lost one that'll be in here somewhere there it is some spare batteries for my head torch just can't really go without those um, it's quite good to have them as a backup then i've got now this is kind of a luxury for me in a way uh, it's heavy is what i'm getting at so it weighs 800 no it doesn't 80 grams so it's quite heavy it's it's just a weight um, all of this adds up, every gram really does add up, but basically this is, uh, these are high five tablets, it's a tropical flavour, but basically every other one I've staggered as a multivitamin, so that I can just make sure I'm getting some nutrients in, uh, and electrolytes when I'm, I'm on the trail, so I've got that there, nice tube, at least that'll go down in terms of weight as I use them, it's not going to go up, which is good. Then the final few things in this underside pocket, I've got some just tablets and some water purification tablets and so they're there I keep them nice and accessible I've got a lighter which is a backup in case my stove system which you'll see in a minute in case that fails so I've got that there and my spork which is life itself so that's my spork that's where I keep that obviously you can see it's <laughs> kept accessible um, right then let's have a look at the inside of the pack so I've got my pack sometimes it will have a, a rain cover over it I'd still use a rucksack liner. I know some people say these are old school, but I just quite like them. So I've got a rucksack liner there, which essentially is a plastic bag. Just added protection. So the first thing that I can get out is my mountain equipment, Lahotse jacket. This is certainly not as light as they come in terms of waterproofs, but it's got pit zips. And this is uh, got reinforced shoulders, hip, hip sort of section, so that it's not just gonna get worn away. I've recently reproofed this as well, uh, so it's, yeah, it's not light, it doesn't fold down that small, but it's a quality jacket, and I know that if I'm wearing that, I'll certainly be protected from the elements. Uh, up next then, food! Yay! <laughs> now I'm doing something a little bit different with this trail. Uh, normally what I do is I tend to pack, you know, at least a fair amount of cereal bars and evening meals, and I'll bring enough breakfast for the trail. But actually this pack, as I say, is heavier than I really want it to be. I would love to get this weight down more. Um, but what I've got in here is kind of just a random selection of stuff that uh, will see me for a couple of days, that's about it, um, because I'm hoping to buy food on the trail. So it's going to involve a certain amount of sort of planning ahead, staying vigilant to, to when the shops are open, can I make it there, what do I need to buy. So I've got two spare sort of Ziploc bag things, just because. Then I've got one, two, three evening meals and you know if I was hungry I could eat all of these as one meal let's be honest so I've got two sort of couscouses which weigh 100 grams each and then I've got this packet of noodles which is 108 grams uh, reading that off the back so that's what they claim they are so I've got those three evening meals I'm not bringing any sort of ration packs or dehydrated packs I'm just hoping to supplement my diet when I'm walking go to shops go to tea shops it might cost me a little bit more but that's what I'm hoping to work with on the trail I've got some tea bags and I've got some mint tea bags. I just live in hope that I can find milk 
and have a brew because that's just the most boosting thing for my morale is a decent cup of tea. <laughs> uh, having said that, I have some treats here and then I've got four, oh, where'd that go? There it is, four uh, sort of latte sachets. They actually just need using to be honest. So I've got those for my longest mileage days just to treat myself as a reward. Also get some, yeah, more calories in. And then I've just got a real selection of uh, cereal bars, more mostly Cheer Charge actually. They've got these beautiful like Coffee Karma raw fruit ones. They've got Chia Seed Flapjack with banana. That's my favorite. I wish they were bigger. Uh, they've got Cashew Karma. Oh man, do you know, I could just eat these now. But they weigh, you know, 35 grams each, 30 grams. They're not, they're not the lightest because they are flapjacks, but they're high calorie. So it's a bit of a compromise. Um, Lidl's have started doing these raw fruit ones as well so I've got one of them and just a couple of sort of OT bar things as well so you can see I've got quite a few cereal bars and then the rest all that's left is a few breakfasts so I've got one two three four five six oat sachets they're golden syrup just add water and that's my breakfast they're about 200 calories each so obviously that's only six days worth the rest of it I hope to be buying things on the trail buy yogurt I really enjoy yogurt I enjoy tea cakes um, just anything like that that's quick to eat nice and well, I wouldn't carry the yogurt. I'd buy that if I stopped near a shop, but those are the things I like to buy. So that's my food bag in the nice yellow dry bag and easily accessible if I get hungry. So that's that one there. Up next, just, just happens to be there. This is my Patagonia Nano Puff hoodie. Uh, check out the review of that one. I really like this synthetic insulation layer. It means if it gets wet, I try not to get it wet, but if it gets wet, then it'll keep me nice and warm. I use that in the evenings. I will not walk in that. I like to keep that uh, protected. It's not the most breathable layer. So that's what I've got in terms of insulation. And then my clothes bag. So this is slightly different to normal as well in that I've got a new piece of kit, which is, is an old piece of kit of mine, but it's a new addition to this walk. And that is this. I have a long sleeve shirt thing. And basically what I've tried to think about is because I'm going to be walking and I'm going to be sweating, it's going to rain. My orange jacket that I normally use is actually 10% cotton. And I found on recent trails, it's just not been drying out. It weighs nearly 500 grams, so it's heavy. Um, so I've tried to sort of rethink my, my system for this trail. Basically, I'll be wearing my Chia Charge t-shirt because as I say, they're my main sponsors. And actually, you know, I've worn that t-shirt for like 15 days in a row and it still doesn't smell. So it's made of something pretty decent. Um, so I'll be wearing that. Then if I get cold, I can put this over the top. And of course, if it's raining, I'll have my uh, coat on anyway, which is windproof and waterproof. And then again, another little layer is I can put my um, the crag hoppers top on as well. So those are kind of my walking layers. I could wear four layers. And then at a push, if I needed to, I can put my Patagonia on as well. So that's exactly why I'm packing that. It's got thumb loops. It's really old. I think it's Northridge. Uh, it's a little bit big for me, hence why I can put it over a T-shirt. So I've got that one there. And then everything else is pretty much just socks. <laughs> um, but before the socks, I've got some shorts. So I'll wear these in the evening and sleeping. I have two pairs of underpants. Obviously, I'll be wearing one, so there you go. You now know my underpants system. <laughs> and uh, I've got a vest top thing that I'll also wear to sleep in. So that's, that's really light. I mean, that just weighs like, what, 10 grams or something crazy. And then what you'll see is I'll be wearing one pair of socks to so take that one out. I've got one, two, three, four pairs of socks that I'm gonna be carrying. Uh, that might seem excessive, but as I say, it's forecast to rain. I'm wearing some old boots that I'm just trying to get some last bit of life out of. And uh, wet socks, putting them on in the morning. For me, I often find that they give me blisters. So I'm just trying to give myself a bit of variety here. Uh, in terms of looking after my feet. One of them I will never walk in, which is this pair. I always put these on in the evening at night when I sleep. These are my clean pair. Um, they just keep my feet protected. They help to recover them when I put the foot cream stuff on them that I use. So that's my sleeping pair. So in theory, I only have four pairs of socks, really. Um, but one of them's gonna get thrown away. These are really old once the trail's done. So that's my sock system. And that, for me, it works. It means I don't get blisters. I walked the coast to coast, 200 miles across the country, didn't get a single blister. And that was because of my sock system and my foot care system, which I'll hopefully talk about a little bit more in some upcoming videos. So that is my clothes bag. It's a little bit bulky, but um, it's really not too bad. You know, when we're talking about two weeks, I think it's okay. So that's that one. 
And then up next, these are just packed here because as I say, this is packed for flying. I'm hoping not to walk with both of these, but I've got a smidge canister and I've got some skin so soft. So I've, <laughs> I put a post out on Facebook on a great group called Outdoor Gear Advice and just sort of talking about uh, insect repellent and what works for people. And it kind of was a 50-50 between Avon So Soft and, oh, Skin So Soft and the Smidge. So I'm literally gonna try both. If one of them doesn't work for me, then I'll just donate it to someone else that it does work for. The West Highland Way is a very well-known trail. I'm expecting there's gonna be other walkers there that I'll meet as I'm traveling. Um, so I'm taking both of those for now. It's kind of a bit of an experiment. And I'm also hoping when I get back from the trail then to make a review video specifically for the West Highland Way and the Great Glen Way and talking about just general insect uh, survival in Scotland. So we'll have a chat about that at a later date. Um, if I've already made that video by the time you're watching it, it'll be in the link below. <laughs> okay, up next, I've got my wash kit, nice light Ziploc bag. I've got a travel towel. I've got some wet wipes because I've got quite a few wild waps, wild waps, wild camps and uh, body staying in nuss. So that'll just help me with hygiene where there's no showers, toothbrush, toothpaste, and a little bit of shampoo and uh, body wash. Then this here is my first aid kit. So this is a custom made one. I've put everything in there, know how to use it. I'm very happy with that. So that's my first aid kit. That would sometimes be kept higher in my pack just so it's more accessible. This is a weight most people wouldn't have. This is camera batteries. This is charging stuff for camera kit. So that weighs, I think, about two and a half kilograms. Uh, yeah, fun. <laughs> um, and then literally, Roll Mat Thermores Venture. That's my Roll Mat that I use. Nice, that same color green. Got a review on that one. Check out the, the link below. All stacks nicely together. My cooking system is a Jetboil Flash. Obviously, I've not got any gas in there today because I won't be flying with that, but I can put that in there and then pop the lid on top. And then this is my bowl, which is I don't have to take in theory. I can eat out of the jet boil, but it's just quite nice to have the bowl. <laughs> and then nearly there in here is my Berghaus waterproof trousers. And then I've got some little ankle gaiters that I do tend to use. These are Gore-Tex, so I just pop them over my legs and my boots and that just stops a bit of water getting in. Mind you, I'm wearing fabric boots, so you win some, you lose some. That's that. And then the final thing is my Rab Neutrino 400 sleeping bag. So it's, it's pretty bulky, let's be honest. Um, not the lightest sleeping bag in the world, certainly not the heaviest either. So this is down, very, very insulating. Most of the time I have the double zip towards my feet undone so I can breathe. Uh, so I really trust the sleeping bag. I love it, great system and uh, that's what I'll be sleeping in. So this beautiful, colorful array of stuff all fits in this. It's quite cool actually, isn't it really? Um, so <laughs> what we're gonna do then is we'll just pop everything back in and then we'll just finish with a bit of a conclusion. But uh, literally that's everything. Um, other than of course, maybe not, maybe not. I did tell a little lie there. This is the West Highland Way guidebook. So this is a trailblazer guidebook. This is what I'll be using for the West Highland Way. And then what I do is my camera bag sits on my front with my camera in it so I can get that out nice and quickly. And then what I do is I find, I'm folding up this Harvey's map, which I really don't need. You know, I've done the West Highland Way before. Uh, I know that the sign, the, there's really good signage, uh, but I just want to bring this because it's quite nice to have a map look at the surrounding area. That just folds in half. I'm not someone who keeps things pristine. And then I shove it in there next to my camera. So that's where I keep my Harvey's map. I'm going to be using the Trailblazer travel guide and I keep that tucked in the sort of airspace bit behind me so I can just pull that out if I need to. And having talked about travel guides, down in the back here, there's like a little hidden sleeve. I've got this, which is another extra weight that I wouldn't normally have on the trail. But because I'm doing the two walks, I've got the Great Glenway uh, guidebook and the Great Glenway map. So they've, I've got to bring both of those for the second walk. I could potentially have posted them ahead to Fort William, pick them up somewhere, but pff, it just seemed easier just to carry them. So here I am carrying them. I don't know how much this weighs, but it's more than I would like it to. Um, I could potentially just walk it on the Harvey's map, but Again, I quite like these guidebooks in the sense that they give you information about where you are, shop times, phone numbers. You don't need the internet, which is, is good for me. I enjoy steering away from my phone as much as possible. So that's just there, hidden in the back there so much so I forgot it was there. And uh, that's it. I've got a compass in my hip pocket. And that, that, now that is everything. 
let's get this packed up and uh, we'll finish with the conclusion. Sorry about that, for some reason my camera cut out whilst I was packing, I think it just had enough of me to be honest. Uh, but this is everything all packed up then, so as I mentioned briefly earlier, I film on a Canon 70D, I've got the Video Mic Pro and a Manfrotto tripod, so that's what I'll be um, uh, carrying as well, so you just can't see that at the moment within the, the packing system. And uh, that's it folks, so keep an eye out in the, either the link below or in the next couple of weeks if you've seen this as I've uploaded it for some new videos. We'll be talking about the West Highland Way specifically and the Great Glen Way specifically as well as kind of looking after yourself when you're surrounded by mosquitoes and mozzies. So survival mode for me, but that's it folks. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any kind of comments or feedback or anything else you'd like to add or share with people, then please comment below. We're all about helping each other out here and uh, encouraging each other to get outside and spend more time in the wild. You got it. Enjoy your adventures guys and stay wild. <laughs>